There we go. Okay, good evening. This is Thursday, January 28th, uh, Board of Selectmen. Uh, the first thing is a uh, public hearing on a petition of National Grid to ex ex excavate the public street and, run and maintain under underground electric conduits on covered lane. Uh, National Grid beginning at the point approximately 410 feet northwest of the center line at the intersection of Butternut Lane. Uh, National Grid to install 75 feet of primary underground from existing pull box to feed one new transformer to be installed. And come up and tell us all about it. Hi, and I'm Iris from National Grid. Uh, we have a new house being built on um, Hubbard Lane, and currently we don't have any um, utilities to feed that house. So we would have to run the primary and the uh, contractor would have to put the, the, the pipe in about 75 feet to get to the lot line. So it's, pretty much just, so it's not real it's not actually going under Hubbard Lane, it's just going alongside within the town easement or it's just cutting it across one driveway. Yes. Yeah. There's a cold the fact yeah. and we're gonna be in it's not really in the road, it's uh, more dirt. Okay. Okay. Harold has looked at it and he has no issues with it. Okay. Mark, do you have any issues with it? Well, I just said, I, I, <coughs> as far as the uh, tree warden, there's just to the right of where the proposed uh, pad would be, there's a clump of five smaller maples that are uh, within the town easement, so they are town trees. The lot corner stake is behind them, so it identifies that is the lot corner, so they are definitely on town easement. I was just concerned about what the impact would be on those. Uh, that group of trees and, and where the pad would actually be. I see the painted mark on the street. Um, I know that the, the pull box is uh, you know, typically like three, three by five. The pad, transformer pad would typically be three by five, and that they're usually down around three feet in depth. Uh, so my question was, um, I assume that they're going to uh, horizontal bore or cut, go underneath the existing driveway that's which is tarred, that's which is there, and then uh, <coughs> over to the new pull box area. Um, and I didn't know the uh, amount of excavation and if it was going to uh, necessarily impact those trees. We wouldn't have to hold, would have to hold a public hearing for those trees, but not with a planning board because it's not a slope road. But it still falls under Mass General Law for the shade trees. And so I don't know if there's any tree trimming or removals that are, were, were planned for that uh, project. I just don't see that there's not going to do something that to do on the better. Exactly. It's marked. I mean, it's okay. just, you know, um, if they're going to hug the edge of, of Hubbard Lane for the trenching or trench in the, in the, right of, in the roadway, then there's not any impact at all. But I assume they're going to be going along the edge of the road in the grass area, but it's going to be right into the, the roots of that clump of five. Mm -hmm. so those clump of five trees are right on the edge of the new proposed driveway. What I would um, <coughs> say. I'm not sure. I haven't been out here um, probably since December. And when I went out, um, there was it wasn't currently working on um, the house. I'm not sure if they're waiting for spring or what. Um, if that will be impacted, then we would have to again come before the board and see what we how we can work around the trees or what we can do. Um, it was my understanding that they were going to be closer to the curving mm -hmm. than up where the trees was. I think the trees, if I'm not, if I remember correctly, was more than five feet from the edge of the curve. Not that much more than five, yeah. I don't think. Probably less than five, but you know, greater than three, for sure. Mm -hmm. I th yeah, okay, I thought it was about five feet. Um, and I did see that there were smaller trees, and I did see that. But again, we have to be on the lot line. Um, we can't put it on the neighbor's property. Mm -hmm. The neighbor's property is 
quite a bit back from the edge of the tar. It's probably back closer to 10 feet. The, stake, the corner of the lot is staked, and it's probably about 10 feet back from the tar. So you're saying that if we went 10 feet back, we still would be on town property? On that corner, yes. Then we would have to go back out and I you know, can meet someone out to see again where we can put this. I can meet Harold again. Oh, that sounds like you can <coughs> the mark out there. I mean, it's, it's yeah, you know, if, it's, if the trench, width of the trench isn't, you know, greater than you know, a foot or so, and they're going to keep it up tight to the, the edge of the, or closer to the edge of the curve, mm -hmm. then it's not, a, it's not a problem. But if we're going to put a 24-inch trench in, and, you know, has multiple uh, underground utilities in there, then it's going to definitely impact that. There will definitely be multiple underground utilities yeah, yeah. in the trench. So then I would have to set up, if you give me the number, we can set up a point and then we meet out there. Okay. It sounds like there might be some latitude to, to move the... Yeah, the further you move it away from the tire, the more yeah. wooded area you get into. So, yeah. you know, I know that they don't want to really get into uh, cutting up pavement and such. Yeah. But yeah. Right. Now, we're going to have to cut the pavement anyway to cross the, the driveway. driveway. But the, where we're going to cut at is town property. Um, Again, we can set up a, a point okay. in the middle. I don't know if we're speaking out of time. Uh, do we need to come back to extend this hearing, or if there is no issues with it, can we just move forward, or they can move forward? I mean, we, we, could, can, we could condition approval on the subsequent meeting, and, and or, or I mean, we're going to have to hear back from you anyway to. Um, I'm not, I mean, if, if you and, and Iris work it all out and we've got the details, so we should, you don't need to be here for it, but probably I would say we just continue until until they get it worked out. Okay. But don't we have to continue it to a specific date? We would have to continue to a certain day, uh, specific date. Uh, do you think, if you can get it done in two weeks, which you probably can, we can, we can do it, we continue it to February 11th at the same time. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. All right. Then I'll make a motion that we uh, continue this public hearing uh, until February 11th, when we can hear back from uh, Mr. Case and Iris. At, at seven o'clock. At seven o'clock. Yes. Okay. Sir. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Next on the agenda is a presentation on mosquito control proposal from Vector Disease Control International. Hey. Hey. How are you? Um, so we're from Vector Disease Control International. We do mosquito control programs for municipalities and counties uh, in about 20 states nationally. Uh, we've been with us for about 20 years. We've been in Massachusetts for about three years. Uh, we currently service uh, Nantucket and we're in conversations with some Western Mass municipalities and some neighboring towns as well here. So, uh, so we provide integrated mosquito control services. So that's everything from identifying where mosquitoes are breeding in the town and we inspect those regularly and uh, proactively treat those areas so we get mosquitoes before they hatch. Uh, we also set adult mosquito traps so we're collecting samples <coughs> on a weekly basis. We know what species are present. Uh, we test those for disease. Uh, so we're primarily focused on mosquito-borne diseases. So when we're testing, uh, for those diseases, we can proactively see if there's going to be risk in humans well before you would see human risk. Um, so that's the, the uh, primary goal of mosquito, uh, adult mosquito trapping and disease testing. And then uh, other components of integrated mosquito control and public education and um, ultimately treating for adult mosquitoes as well as part of it. Mm -hmm. um, what we can do is we can cater a program to municipalities' uh, needs so we can be very flexible. Uh, about in Massachusetts, about half the cities um, are currently uh, doing some type of mosquito control, mostly through state-sponsored mosquito projects. Uh, and about half the uh, half the towns are not currently performing mosquito control services. So, uh, what we're trying to do is educate uh, educate those cities about what their options are for mosquito control. And again, ultimately, what we're trying to do is is be proactive on monitoring for mosquito-borne diseases and preventing. Uh, 
disease in humans. Um, so we've uh, had some conversations with the health department here. We have made some proposals. What we proposed is a you know, baseline weekly mosquito monitoring uh, and uh, primary larviciding inspections and treatments of larval mosquitoes. Uh, that's what we propose. Um, and that's consistent with what we're proposing in, uh, in other cities as well. And that's also consistent with, with what we're doing uh, currently in Nantucket uh, for the last three years. Um, you want to speak briefly sure. to what we're doing in Nantucket? Um, on Nantucket, we have a, um, a program through BDCI that's an integrated program. So we offer services of public education, um, adult surveillance where we do trapping and then disease testing of those mosquitoes. And then we also do um, a limited larvicide program where we use a biocontrol agent to treat the mosquitoes there. Um, and uh, we do it in just the primary um, breeding locations. So we're not doing all the private properties, just the big areas of concern. Um, so we were able to tailor a specific program to the needs of that town without doing, you know, the full barrage of adult spraying and, um, and that kind of thing. So we sort of have tailored the Antigates program to their needs um, while still offering a great approach and um, being aware of what they have for public health threats as far as diseases go and mosquitoes. So we'd love to ultimately we'd love to partner you uh, with you to provide a mosquito control program we certainly would recommend at minimum that all towns are doing at least some level of monitoring um and with the next uh yeah the next step in an integrated program being model surveillance and some model control mm -hmm. um, but we would you know, love to talk to you more about that answer any questions you have on us or mosquito control in general or mosquito control in massachusetts Now, was this this all started because of the Board of Health? It's just originated from the Board of Health. Okay. Are, they, are they recommending that we? Uh, I don't think anyone from the Board of Health is here today. No, I, I spoke with the chairman this morning, and realizing there's no vote going on tonight, you know, it's it's, it's merely a presentation. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> from my understanding is that the Board of Health is interested in the services as far as monitoring, trapping, and monitoring. They're not proposing that the town evaluate spring or anything like that at this point it's really to understand what's out there and then how, mm -hmm. how we could react to something if there's something that's discovered right, right, right. is that a fair yes okay. and, and that's really the benefit of the monitoring mm -hmm. when you see disease west nile or tripoli in the mosquito pools uh, that's when you know you can either at that point you can either decide to take action uh, and be proactive where the mosquitoes are showing disease or you, know, you can alert citizens, you can uh, alert people to take precautions, um, you know, before uh, you see human uh, human events. Because if you're not monitoring, the only data you have to go off is when you actually have human cases that get reported through the health department. And oftentimes, it's harder to then have impact on mosquito populations once it's gotten into, into humans. All right, so so if, if you were to monitor and then you discovered West Nile or something, mm -hmm. What's the sort of, it's always said, yes, we didn't move forward and do something about it. What's mm -hmm. the sort of the turnaround time and, and you know, to, to get something to happen, you know, if we do, say, pull the trigger? Yeah, so if we had a monitoring program in place, we would we'd also develop um, a program and a plan that we would also get approved through the state, um, which is mandated here in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. So we would have a plan in place that would say if, indeed, there is a, you know, mosquito disease or there, there's even human issues that the plan would be then to take these actions to do adult mosquito control in this way. So we would have that plan already in place. Mm -hmm. We would be able to take action immediately uh, if that were the case. But that plan would have been put together in, uh, from input from the Board of Health and, Absolutely. and the other appropriate yeah. boards in town. So. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It would be yeah. determined by the town. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we worked with in Nantucket for a few months um, before we even started to get mm -hmm. that plan in place got it approved in town locally and then got it approved at the state level before we even began uh, operations. And the emergency response plan can really be tailored to, you know, what you feel comfortable with, the budget that, you know, the town mm -hmm. is able to provide. So, um, you know, going forward, doing all the testing, having that plan would be something that you would all decide upon. Okay. Okay. Is the need, you think, primarily going to be focused on disease or, or monitoring for mosquito diseases in terms of what 
No, no, that was the kind of want to speak for everybody, but I mean, that was the plan of the board. I think that was the thinking of the board of health mm -hmm. to do monitoring. Um, I mean, it, if that's, I will say that when we start looking at budgets, mm -hmm. um, if we, if the town does decide to go forward with monitoring, uh, which I think is about 14.9, if I remember in the presentation, mm -hmm. then um, we would not be able, to, and that's what we budget, then we would not be able to react quickly if there was some sort of action that needed to be taken because that service is an entirely different right. level, right. Which, which would not be budgeted for. Right. Um, so that's, and I did, I did discuss that with the chairman this morning. Mm -hmm. And I know in, in general, mosquito control has gone to town meeting at least twice, twice that I know of, and it's been shut down pretty, pretty nice. hard. <laughs> 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 um, no, I mean, I mean, there are more, seem to be more, hmm? uh, I'm not sure it was shot down that hard. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it certainly, uh, it, it was, it was, at least once it was pretty hard, and the other time, yeah. I think. Less hard. Yeah, you know, possibly, <laughs> but I mean, you know, there are, there are, no and improved mosquito borne risks. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. You know, but I mean, I think the reality is if we're going to be monitoring, um, you know, we have to expect that we're going to be treating because we know there is West Nile in the general area. I'm not sure there's Triple E in, the, in this general area. Uh, or I haven't, I don't remember any cases in, in, in recent years. Um, and then there tends to be more toward the southeast, right. but um, not, not so much up around here. Um, was well, in mosquito pools, I think, in Western Mass this mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. The problem um, is that a lot of these smaller towns, such as Bolton, don't do mosquito monitoring. So you right. don't really know what's present. Right. But keep in mind, too, that even if you do have positive cases, we're not required to do treatment. It would be more of a public awareness thing as well. Mm -hmm. So it would just be to, you know, let your let your school districts know there's a potential for a triple E threat, you know, be aware, you safeguard and just yeah. use the preventative measures available without going forth with a full treatment. And the the programs that we can offer would be simply just the surveillance without doing those treatments if that was more appropriate right. for this town. Just if I'm clear, were we to move forward on this, there would be a detailed Board of Health hearing before? There would need to be, yes. Okay. And, and then town meeting. Town meeting. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. okay. This is just the beginning of the process right now. <laughs> We've been having a lot of these communications with um, other Western Mass towns who are also sort of interested in just taking on some sort of appropriate action to see what they have, you know, as far as mosquito-borne diseases, just because there's there hasn't been much data on it, and I think towns are interested to know what they have and are looking to do a more proactive approach to awareness yeah. so in that regard, especially with some of these new mosquito-borne diseases that right. we're seeing pop up. Yeah, well, there's, a, there's a new one, I guess, down in South America. Is it going like this? Yes. Mm -hmm. I was just listening to NPR on the way over here. Mm -hmm. Yep, Zika virus. Zika, Zika mm -hmm. yeah. That's, that's, that's scary, scary stuff. Um, <laughs> do you guys have some, I don't want to bog down on details here, but do you guys have some information to hand out on what diseases you can actually test for and how you test for them? Sure, we yes. can, yeah. I don't think it's, it's included in our packet, the specific details yeah. of testing, but okay. we can share that with you, absolutely. Yeah. The testing for viruses isn't necessarily that easy. Uh, no, but our we have, we have specific proteins. Mm -hmm, we have lab facilities that do real time PCR testing for Eastern Equine Encephalitis, and then we also do PCR and ramp analysis for West Nile virus. And some of the other diseases, like the chicken gun and the dengue, and it's like you don't see that up here. Um, but if we did have the mosquito that carries those diseases, we have other um, mm -hmm. laboratories that have the ability yeah, to test for those. We have something available for us, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Mr. Okay. Chairman, just for the, I read through the local paper, and um, so I was wondering if briefly you could differentiate why your program versus Mosquito Control Project. Um, sure. So you know we can Mosquito Control Projects, and we both focus on integrated programs, so we can we offer the same service as a project. Um, you know, typically most Mosquito Control has been done in Massachusetts through the projects, um, but we. Um, 
you know, we have precedent now where there's contractors that can provide those services as well and get programs approved in the state. You know, the major difference is, you know, we can really cater a program to a town uh, specifically to their needs or desires of their program. Uh, and we can have that flexibility and uh, try to fit a program that, that fits the town's budget. Um, it's probably, uh, probably the major difference. Thanks. Okay. Part of the next step is, you know, there's further discussion with the Board of Health. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you. No, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any business cards? We do. Yes. Thank The Route 117 Prioritization Committee Final Report. Gentlemen, we work all right. Well, oh, we did. It's nice to come to a meeting on the night when there was a hockey game. <laughs> 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 so so otherwise, you wouldn't be here. Although, I'm not going to be falling in. Okay. Uh, I believe you all have copies of the report. I'm going to go over it very quickly. First of all, I'd like to say there were 11 people on the committee uh, from various parts of the town. We met seven towns. Uh, we had different views on different parts of all of the reports. However, we were able to come to, we were able to discuss them. We were very civil. We were able to come to, uh, to arrange these into a priority. Manner, and uh, I'd like to thank all the rest of the committee, a lot of people are here. Uh, it, it turned out to be a very cooperative committee. Mm -hmm. uh, as it says in the report, we met seven times. We were looking at the three reports which we were tasked with, the Main Street Safety Task Group report from 2002, the non-motorized transportation mobility committee's non-motorized transportation recommendation from 2014 and the mass stop group 117 review of ownership uh, transfer dated october 2014. Uh, we determined that the easiest way to go through the prioritization would be to see which areas of 117 we wanted to address first second third fourth and fifth and then prioritize within that we led off with uh, some general recommendations. Uh, we felt that the highest priority area would be the Neshoba Regional High School area uh, because of the uh, students that are there, the amount of traffic that goes through there, um, and the speeds that are going through there. Uh, number three was the town center area. Number four is the 117-110 area, which is only at that lower level because we know that work has already begun on that uh, intersection. We haven't started it. Well, it hasn't started yet, but it's in the pipeline. Yes, right. it is. It's in the pipeline. Uh, and then down to uh, 117 and uh, priority six, which is looking at driveway hills along the entire road. But the takeaway from all of this really isn't in prioritizations. I mean, that's what we're tasked to do. However, uh, if you read our concluding statement, we felt very strongly that 117 has to be dealt with as a whole. We can prioritize what we want, but if we consider 117 to be the part of Bolton, and if you consider it to be important to the town, it needs to be, it needs to have, uh, needs to be considered as in its entirety, including the selectmen, the advisory committee, the capital committee, the DPW, um, and get an outside consultant with documented experience in transportation planning to come up with a plan for it, come up with a financial plan for it, figure out how we're going to do it, and do it as a whole. I think that was pretty much a consensus of the entire committee that we wanted to do. Um, Any questions? No, I mean, I've, I've reviewed it, and I think we need to spend some more time going through it. But I think also, um, 
been talking with, with Don this afternoon, uh, probably the, the first step is to take this report and have Don forward it to NASDAQ. Uh, because really, um, we can decide whatever we want to do, but unless MassDOT agrees with that, um, you know, they may have they may have some some other opinions in terms of some of the nuances of the, the report. I think we it would be beneficial to get their feedback before we go off and start engineering and figuring out costs. And well, we can only take the priorities which were laid out. That's what that was our charge. So uh, I think that's probably the first. Step. Some of them we kind of scratched a little yeah. bit around yeah. and interpreted in order yeah. to get some things in, but we did try to stick very closely to what was recommended. And, yes. and, and really, the, the first question I would ask Mascot is, is there anything in this report that's a non-starter for any reason that we may not be aware of? Yeah. Right. Um, and then, uh, if, if and when we do hire a consultant to do what you suggest in the final paragraph, mm -hmm. they would have to go back and work with MassDOT anyway to, right, right. to get into the to the details of how to make things happen. But if there's anything that they say it just isn't doable for whatever reason, then it would, it would be good to know that up front. Yes, no, absolutely. Yeah. Or they may suggest a, a slightly alternative path to hopefully accomplish the same thing. Yeah, yeah but I, you know, the individual steps that we, the individual things that we do to the road uh, aren't as important and I'm speaking for myself, aren't as important to me as looking at the road as a whole mm -hmm. and not trying to pick off little things. One of the things that's, that I guess didn't surprise me, but when I looked at three reports, how few things had been done from those, had been actually done from those three reports. You know, we. You know, if somebody wanted a sign, we'd pick off the sign because we could do that for a couple of hundred bucks. But beyond that, we never looked at everything as a whole. And that's what I think the town really needs to do if they truly consider 117 to be the center of town. Uh, and I think chronically we, we kind of patched it enough to keep things moving, but not really to, to look at right. really addressing the, I mean, so you have three. I mean, the three studies did not differ a whole lot in no, they the issues that they yeah. that they brought up. So, you know, so going back quite a ways, we haven't made a whole lot of progress on doing anything for one seventeen. No. Right. And I think a lot of that, especially the larger items, is, is money. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that's been that's been the, the case. So well, once again, if if that is important to the town, mm -hmm. yep. You know, there are ways to get the money. But I I actually did attempt to read the entire report once, I think I did. Uh, but there's quite a bit in here, so. Well, we, we attempted to do that, too. Uh, 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 when you referred to guardrails, did you, and I think you did, but I just, I think you also referred to the, the railing at Bond Park. Uh, yes, that was yes. one of the things, you know, we, that was one of the, the Pond Park one was a specific mm -hmm. recommendation from the, um, from the mass stop review. It's uh, a scary thing. I mean, I mean, I drive by it I don't know how many times a day, and until you're right there and you look at it and you see the the rot and the deterioration, and really, that that railing couldn't stop anything from okay. going off the road or going into the water. So but I mean, as a committee, I think we felt that you know we were talking about keeping that separate, but. Mm -hmm. If we're going to address guardrails, once again, we should address the guardrails all along the road. There are places where it's closer, places where you know it'd be nice to get ones with the safety ends on, on them. And so we, we kind of included the Pond Park guardrail under the guardrail. Well, I thought you had, but I, right. I, thought you, I thought you also called it out specifically because it was a, a particular concern. They so. did, they did. Yeah. It, it was called out by MassDOT as a particular yeah. okay. concern. Okay. 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 So, any comments, questions? No? Comments, comments. I thought it was a really great job. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. Great. Thank, great. Well, Thank the rest of the groups. I mean, like I said, it was, uh, you know, some of the meetings were, were fun and missed a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, I mean, it, 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 we're, 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 we're all wonderful, wonderful writing. A lot yeah. of wonderful writing. Yeah. yeah. Thank Chris for a lot of that. Uh, <laughs> We took a lot of our gibberish and put it into English, which was nice. And, uh, so I think we'll uh, we'll, 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 we'll get a copy off to the uh, yeah, we'll get a copy off to to Mascot, and then we'll um, probably uh, 
schedule some time in a couple of meetings to go over it in, in some more detail and hopefully have some comments back from them mm -hmm. and uh, decide where we want to go from here. Okay. Okay. Lily, have we put the, can we put this up on uh, the website tomorrow sure. along with, with the other documents so you know, people can see it and when I email MassDOT, I'll just direct them, I'll give them the link to the website. Anybody have questions, comments? Mm -hmm. uh, opposing perspectives, anything not? I think our hope is that this not be in the way. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would like to thank Bert for putting everything together. Yeah. And keeping us on track. <laughs> 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 I think, I think that's the toughest thing. Yeah. I, 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 I just wanted to names. get home by the third period. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes. Mm -hmm. Look at where I'm going. Oh, it should have been introduced to everybody. Oh, yeah. Too many of them. I don't remember. I'm just trying to, you know, I just got, I got a new laptop and I don't understand it. It looks like you're having fun. No, no, it's so much and everything. Oh, I know. 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 Uh, I'm a little ahead we are to go down to some other business things and back out signs. I don't know if we're, if we're we, the people are here or not. Um, Caldwell Banker signs? Um, yeah. Yeah. Is that right there? Uh, okay, okay. Oh, come, come on, Jeff. Yeah. Was yeah. anyone else coming here? You know? I don't think so. I'm okay. representing the sign company. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fun. Okay, so next is a request for a temporary banner at Caldwell Banker, 718 Main Street, advertising the move to 626 Main Street, and request for a new sign for Caldwell Banker at 626 Main. Okay. Shuffling all the, the real estate offices are up here. Yeah. They're not busy selling homes, they're busy shuffling offices now. Okay. What are they looking for? What are, what are the signs going to look like? Um, mm, uh, well, there's a brown sign that's there, so they're just going to get a pan and put on it. Yep. You know, okay. so that's already there. And then um, right above the entrance, there's going to be a sign mounted. Mm -hmm. I guess this tenant isn't there yet. This is, we just put that in there to show you. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yep. But the other tenant isn't in there. Okay. And then the other sign would be mounted to the wall right next to the entrance mm -hmm. indicating uh, upstairs tenant so it's just a directory more or less. sure sure yeah. okay I'm not sure. that's pretty much it I think and then then you have the sign yeah, over the existing oh yeah, yeah. So that's going to be the inner screw to existing sign indicating they moved to right. this new location yeah. and then once they move I guess it gets removed yeah I'm assuming Mike's okay with that <coughs> Yes. Yes. Fine with me. No questions. Okay. No. Did you talk to Frank? Actually, my business partner, this is his job, and he couldn't make it tonight, so I'm representing him. Okay. So I don't know who Frank is. Okay. Frank must be the owner of the building, maybe? Yes. Yeah. But yeah. In fact, I thought he might be here. But yeah, but he's working with Frank. <coughs> Frank, Frank approved all of this. Well, I guess uh, uh, I'll uh, move that we approve the request for a temporary banner at Caldwell Banker at 718 Main Street for advertising and move to 626 Main. And also approve the request for the new signs for, for the facility at 626 Main Street as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay. Fulton Primary Care? Yes. Next is a request for a new sign for Fulton Primary Care at 146 Hudson Road and other locations in Fulton. Yes. Actually, it's not a new sign, it's temporary. 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 Temporary
to put them in up. Yeah. Well, actually, you do have a new sign up at, at the oh. facility. There, there, this sign was replaced with a, with a new sign. It, well, it would give a change of the name. Okay, sorry. Yes, and that also needs to be approved. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that, 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 yeah, so that, that sign technically should be up there. Sorry about that. <laughs> So, um, so I'm not sure if you know the history of uh, Bolton Family Medicine and what just recently transpired. No, please no, tell us. Okay. So uh, Bolton Family Medicine has been there for about 30 years. Mm -hmm. Dr. Fitzpatrick has retired. Um, UMass, who bought the practice from him, has decided to close the site. Dr. Fitzpatrick reached out to us in an effort to keep the facility open because he feels that Bolton deserves to have primary care and doctors to take care of its patients mm -hmm. so that they don't have to travel. So we worked uh, out a plan to keep the facility alive. Uh, we've done some renovations to the site. Um, there's some very strange and unique compliance laws in healthcare. And uh, because the practice was acquired by another health system, we're not allowed to um, reach out to them directly through UMass's records. So for us, we have to um, send postcards and things to all the towns, which costs us about $30,000 just to send a cold card um, through the mail. So what we're looking for is we're looking for some assistance by getting the word out to all the residents in the town that we do have doctors here. We have two great doctors uh, ready to see new patients. Dr. Fitzpatrick also closes practice to new patients. So if you were a patient of his, he continued with you, but he stopped um, with new patients. So we've invested with two doctors so that we can have um, the community um, bring not only themselves, their spouse, or whoever else. Um, so we're looking for some help by putting these banners up in a few locations. Um, yeah, so this is what the can help you with yeah. what they would look like. And so can I just ask a quick question? Sure. So Dr. Fitzpatrick's, all his files, all those records went to UMass? Correct. Okay. And now, so in order, so if you're a patient of Dr. Fitzpatrick, what you need to do is contact UMass, and then they will send the record to us. So he had 4,000 patients already. We have 1,100 requests their records to come back, so that you don't have to go to Harvard or wherever else they sent them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. sure. Yeah. No, that's that's. Uh... And one, I'm sorry. One of the reasons these folks are here tonight is um, a couple of weeks ago, we received a request to put banners on some town-owned property, for instance, the railing at Pond Park. And I certainly didn't have the, the authority to grant a private business the right to put a sign on town property. So I denied the request and we encouraged them to come to the selectmen, which is why they're here tonight. <coughs> and as you can see with the banner, it's very simple. Um, it does let the community know he, these are our doctors. Um, and it does show that we're accepting new patients. Um, the amount of calls that we've actually we had to hire two secretaries to take the phone calls because mm -hmm. that's how many people thought they didn't have a doctor. So um, the the uh, Neshoba has invested about four hundred thousand dollars to make this transaction happen. So um, anything we can do to try and help reach these patients would be greatly appreciated. Um, the sites that I think it was uh, we talked about, mm -hmm. you would. Do you call it the park? Is that it? Pond the park. Pond yes. park. Um, uh, you know, I'm not from the area, so I've gotten some help from locals. <laughs> what would be good location? So we're told Pond Park. Um, and, and then there, um, we were talking to Sarah O'Toole yep. of Bolton. Yeah, I have a letter. Yep, I have a letter from Sarah. Or do you have the letter? Yes, I have the letter. Oh, here it is. There you go. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, could you ask these folks to identify themselves? Yes. I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, like, introduce yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, my name is Sal Perola, and I'm the president and CEO of the Shoba Valley Medical Center. Thank you. Can you give me my card if you'd like. Thanks a lot. Oh, I'm sorry, that was my last one. <laughs> Wait, we'll share. Okay. <laughs> and I'm Virginia Leonard from the Shimmel Valley Medical Center. Okay, great, thanks. Virginia Leonard. 
so in addition to um, the, the location, um, which I really not great on somewhere, I'm assuming it'd be orchards, um, the, uh, would be the, the park. And then uh, we'd like to have one on our property because the signage that's there is very small. This banner is, you know, does give a lot of color. And most importantly, it lets people know that we're accepting new patients. And that's really what we want people to know. And you're doing a direct mail? So we've already we've done, done that. that. To Bolton and adjacent towns? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, we sent out mail to the towns where the patients were coming from previously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you not receive one? <laughs> I don't know if I did or not. Yeah. See, that's the thing with Sorry. those yeah. um, because it, it is such a huge cost to do that. Um, it, it, we don't even we don't even know what the um, success rate is, but we know that in a busy location that this will definitely get um, some exposure, and it certainly doesn't cost forty thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. Copy of that sign is already on the property. No, no, we took it down. We took we it down. down. Because someone contacted the building us. inspector. Went over Monday and asked them to take it down until it was approved tonight. Right. Okay. okay. Well, what about the other sign? The other sign still needs approval. Okay. okay. But it's a stone sign, so we thought we'd. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. And it's, it's it is in the same footprint as before. So oh, I know. I know. Mm -hmm. So you'd be looking to put these up, what, for a couple of months or uh, forever no. or what's, no. no. It's no, just, no. it's a, it's usually we were, we were three, four, three, four weeks, something, you know. Whatever just, that you, I mean, I, it would be great to have two months to get it through the spring because one snowstorm and, and you probably won't even see it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> or they'll be going down. So it's <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. I mean, I certainly don't have a problem with, with one of these on, on your property, obviously, and if you've gotten permission from these folks to put one down at Bolton Orchards. I'm a little concerned about putting a commercial sign up um, at the Pine Park railing because that's typically done for you know, nonprofit groups or you know, the Bolton seniors, but we typically in the past haven't allowed or approved any signage for a commercial entity. And sort of, you know, you start going down the slippery slope of, of, you know, past practice, and now you've done it for one, so now you open up the can of worms for everybody else. Uh, and, and that's one of the reasons why you know, uh, Mr. Lowe had, had denied that request, at least initially. Um, but, I, you know, if you want to have this sign along with the other one, Go, go through the process of getting approved. I mean, I've, I've seen the sign and I think it's fine. You just need to go through the mechanics of getting approved through uh, getting the permit and getting approved through uh, 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 the building uh, inspector. inspector and then the then permanent sign is what he's talking about. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. Right. The permanent sign. And both mortgages, but I'm not necessarily in favor of, of allowing it at the uh, Pond Park just because it's your commercial entity and we've never really done that before. And there may be some commercial on kind of the other side of 117 that you might be able to uh that might be amenable to putting it you know letting you put it up for there as well so mm -hmm. um but yeah i mean i agree I and mean, kind of <coughs> signs get very touchy in general and then sure. you know uh, people can get very very uh possessive of the town land so <laughs> Because I know if we do it, there will be some, at least one or two people who are going <laughs> to raise a stink about it. So, and if you could, if you could get another commercial property owner in town, or even you know a homeowner who's willing to do it, that that's I have no problem with that as long as you get permission. Um, so, how would we go about communication with you if we were to get another? I mean, I, I, I mean, I think if you can just get a letter similar to this, <laughs> and get it to Don, I think. That's yeah, good. I think. I mean, I, 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 I you would have to come back here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you just gave me a letter, you know, we put yeah. it on file, and, and that would yeah. be fine. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I think those are great, and, I, and I'm glad to have you in town. It's thank you. Know, We're happy to be here. <laughs> good. So, okay. So I guess. Uh, Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Okay, well, I guess I'll make a motion that we approve the request um, from the Shoulder Medical, Medical Valley Medical Center 
to allow them to put a banner sign on their own property uh, and to allow them to put the sign in the vault north just as they've got permission for that, but not at the, uh, uh, the, uh, the railing at Pond Park. But if they do get uh, another commercial or home owner to allow them to put the sign, as long as you provide the sign, the, a letter saying to that effect uh, to Mr. Lowe, that's fine with us, you don't have to come back. Uh, but you will need to go through the motions of getting the, the new permanent sign approved. And I, I would say as long as uh, they go through the motions with Mike and get the permit and then pay the fee and he's okay with it, that these folks don't have to come back. That would be fair. Okay. I'm going to run and drum put a thing like ice cream on how long they can keep them up on the banners. On the banners. What would you like? <coughs> Yeah. 60 days they want to yeah. 60 days yeah 60 days is fine yeah. sure yeah. And, and if you think you want a little bit longer then you can just come back 60 yeah. days from today would yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. let us know if you want a little bit more then that's fine yeah. too okay. yeah i think you know i like to keep the distances in town so yeah. it's a wonderful thing so wonderful hopefully yeah. i'll second that motion okay all in favor aye aye <laughs> thank you very much thank you very much good luck you get a letter or anything, you can you have my email address too, so I can pass it on. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 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 Okay. Next is the, is the, is the, is the, the party agenda that everybody looks forward to every meeting. That's an update on the internet and, and any other business the town administrator has. I can only package it so many ways. But, um, so, two, two things relative to Minuteman tonight. Uh, first of all, just a reminder to everyone that we do have a special town meeting scheduled for February 8th to vote on the proposed new regional agreement. Minuteman and we do have a quorum requirement of 75 people and with it with a two article uh, warrant um, the concern is always to have a quorum so anyone listening this evening if you could please come to the special town meeting on February 8th at 7 p.m. at the Michelle Regional High School Auditorium that would be very helpful uh, the other uh, major item for Minuteman tonight is Yesterday, the MSBA voted 5 nothing to approve the project. So this is now an MSBA approved project as long as all 16 towns have voted, have not voted to disapprove the project by June 3rd, actually it's May 24th. I think because there are things that need to happen between May 24th and June 30th. But su suffice to say that by the end of the fiscal year, all we need to have approval from every town in the district for the building project or uh, we will lose the MSBA funding which at this point is 44.75 percent reimbursement and when you think about having to go back in the queue if in the future that's what we ended up having to do the current reimbursement rate for new entries is 31 percent mm -hmm. so the base drops significantly wow. from there um, I have a, a quite a few documents that I've received from Minuteman that's informational um, as far as as far as uh, the uh, regional agreement but one thing that keeps on coming up is what is the projected impact to the tax base for the project which and the project is not one of the articles on the warrant that'll be at the annual town meeting but just so you know the range um, if all 16 towns were to remain in the district then the current estimate from Minuteman is the estimated tax impact per medium per median house is $65.22, and and, 22 cents. and um, it's $13.67 and 67 cents per 100,000 assessment. If 100,000 assessment? I beg your pardon. Did you say 100,000? Per 100,000 assessment, yes. If and, and I will go on record as saying this will not happen, but there are seven towns that are considering withdrawing from the district. I do not believe there's any way all seven towns are going to withdraw from the district. So this range is, is from best case to worst case. In this case, all 16 member towns remain in the district, which I personally don't believe will happen either. 
but if we if all seven towns were to withdraw and we were left with nine member towns then the um, estimated tax impact per median house is sixty six dollars twenty one cents or thirteen dollars and eighty seven cents per hundred thousand of assessment which means if we went down to nine member towns uh, the estimated tax impact per median household goes up 99 cents so uh, is it an impact yes is it a major impact no but it certainly is an impact so that provides the range right no. because it's because those seven towns they don't have many students all except a couple I mean uh, first I, that, that's a good example Dover sends I think one or two students this year <clears throat> They were they intended to withdraw. I'm not so sure they will because now the five student minimum is proposed to be removed from the district agreement. It's one of the benefits of the new regional agreement. So with that gone, they're only paying for the students they send. There really is no reason to withdraw. Uh, the same thing for Weston, I think, is another example. I think the two commu personally, in my own opinion, I think the two commu communities that are most likely to withdraw, if anyone withdraws, are Sunday. Sudbury sends 24, 25 students. Uh, Wayland sends far fewer. They send, if I remember correctly, maybe seven or eight, somewhere in that area. So um, Sudbury would have the single largest impact. I mean, that's about half of all the students that we would lose would be if Sudbury were to, were to withdraw. Uh, so that's all the information I have on that right now. But, but oh, that being said, as an MSBA approved project now, the district can push non-member towns to yes. contribute to the capital yes, cost. Yes, that, that, right. that is huge. Which, which is huge and that will end up helping that, that number. Um, it will. It definitely will. The, uh, just, just, so uh, the, the um, special meetings for the regional agreement revisions and one and paid bill. And one and paid bill. Yeah, can't forget that. <laughs> that may draw more people in the regional agreement. Um, the uh, annual town meeting will be voting on the project and, and, and the debt mm -hmm. for that. It's a weird vote that you have to vote to disapprove the, the debt. So in theory, you could just not put an article on it all and just approve it by default, but we're not intending on it. We're, we're intending on having the voters at least be able to okay. chime in on it. So That's right. the law um, says that if there is no, no article on an annual town meeting warrant for that, then it's it's tacit approval yeah. and the only way to defeat the borrowing is to act to take an, uh, a no vote on it it uh, works the same as, as with the turf articles mm -hmm. the, um, yeah. for the but, but but conversely the regional agreement there has to be a vote yes a town yeah. not taking action holds right. up the entire process right. Right. Okay. and so far we've had one town that's had their special town meeting Yes, Arlington. And that's Arlington, and they voted to approve it. So I think 178 to 5 or something like that. It was overwhelming. <laughs> Good. Um, the only other thing I have on my report tonight that, that isn't on the agenda is um, back in December, the selectmen made a site visit down to Alice's property to look at the pole that um, had been damaged and to vote to redirect the guy wire. We finally had good good weather Tuesday, and that work was done. So the wire has been moved successfully. The lights raised back up to a safe height, and we'll be contacting Verizon to tell them to come get their pole. <laughs> and they saw them out a couple of days ago, and they've already pulled that pole. They had they pulled the guy wire up down well, to stay. Okay, but I don't know if they did. They pulled the pole. Well, we I think we took the guy wire down. Too. Okay. So no, we put the rising truck there. So oh well, that, 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 that's good to know. Okay. So, but we're gonna stay on them to get try to get that out of there as, as soon as possible. Can you can take down our pine forest? I'm sorry. Oh, you're gonna, you're gonna take the pine forest down here. Uh, okay. Some pine is more deserving of being taken down than yeah. another. Uh, and unless anyone has any questions for me, that's all I have to say. No. Okay. Okay. On to selecting business. First is to review and execute the memorandum of agreement concerning the special project waiver for the cadet EMT program. Uh, Roger, would you like to just give the selectmen a brief overview as to what changed from the old agreement to the new one? So not much changed at all. Um, I think that the thought, I think Ann, you worked with Ann to, mm -hmm. to bring this up again, have the school um, 
re-sign this. So every time a group there's an administration change with the school, we have to remind them. We had a lot of stuff that was, you know, we had like a gentleman's agreement with um, they would pay for things. So we had to remind them that, you know, this was part of the agreement. So um, not much changed out of here. We did specify that the faculty advisor is something that they pay for. We pay for the instructors um, and the cadet program coordinator, um, but we specified specifically the faculty advisor. And then we called out specifically to the drivers, um, I believe, just so it's, it's all stuff that we had had mm -hmm. agreements with. Mm -hmm. um, we tweaked a little bit of the wording to, um, just to, to reflect the structural changes that we had made on mm -hmm. our side. Um, but for the most part, it's all very, it, it's pretty much the same as what mm -hmm. it had been. It is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and Mark is correct. With the change of administration, it's always good to remind people of their obligations. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Questions, concerns? No, nope, not at all. No, nope. no, nope. okay. Make a motion that we approve the uh, review, execute the memorandum of agreement concerning the special project waiver for the that EMT program. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's a great program. Who's voting there? Oh, uh, yeah. oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. As you know, the, the, the parents of the students that are in the program just love it, and the students love it. Yeah. I, I was actually a cut myself. Mm -hmm. well, my son went through it as well. Okay. Okay. Easy enough. Okay, next is a request from the Solaris Bolton Committee for a letter supporting the community based solar photovoltaic outreach and education program. This is uh, an additional letter that the committee, that the Solarized Board Committee needed um, for their uh, grant application, which they're hoping to submit tomorrow, I believe. Yes. So the, the Davis Farm is the largest solar farm in Massachusetts? Yes. And even before you add another 2.4 megawatts. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed and surprised. Yeah. Uh, the, the one thing that I, I may have come up before, and I'm, I'm full aware of this, but I think the one thing that's lacking, that has been lacking, is the, and I went, I went to the, the website yesterday, there's no information on what it's going to cost a homeowner, what specifically there are as far as, you know, uh, tax credits or no cost loans and any of that. So, so someone looking at that, you know, it's great, but what is it going to cost me, and how long is it going to take me to, to recoup my, my money? There's, there's no detail, and I think you would you would be best served by some of that information there, and maybe some what if examples for you know a system of X Y Z size. Yep. It's going to cost you, you know, X dollars, and it's going to you, know, you get you you'll get these incentives. You know, and then you you can expect to get you know so much electric out of it, and maybe you can pump it back. And just some, some examples, and I think that would that would be very helpful. I think we can add some examples. One one issue though is that we have to wait until we're selected by the Mass CEC as a solar rights committee. They they like to participate with us on, on any any information we put. But, uh, yeah. So we have to be mm -hmm. careful. Yeah, uh, true. But I, I just yeah. yeah, I think it would be I, very I, helpful. Absolutely. We agree. Yeah. yeah. But otherwise, I'm 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 okay. I'm, I'm, I'm on board with this. Okay. No questions. No questions. No questions. All right. So I'm going to make a motion that we uh, yeah. approve the request from Solar Rise oh. Bolton Committee. Oh. Uh, Sorry. No. 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 Great. no. Okay. No. To uh, to sign the letter supporting the community-based solar photo photovoltaic outreach and educational program. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We need to walk out with the signed document so that we can put it in the, <laughs> in the proposal <laughs> tomorrow morning. No problem. It would be so kind. No problem. <laughs> the scanner is uh, warmed up and ready. Can you scan it in and send me a copy so I have sure. it on the Thank you, by the way, for helping us for getting that to the town. We appreciate that. 
Also, we've already made use of the, the, the mailing list. It was up to 420 residents, and it's really been beneficial already. We've gotten 145 responses to our survey so far. It's really, really, really quite good for a town of our population. Mm -hmm. So we feel confident mm -hmm. that we'll get an award. Good. Right. Shall we be able to use the bio that I sent you? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, you have minutes? Yeah. Okay. Then, the final item on the agenda is to we will be going into executive session pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21 to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining for the police and dispatch unions and impact bargaining for the police union as the chair finds that open meeting may have detrimental effect on the board's bargaining position and we will not be returning to open session or we will not be reconvening, reconvening after open session so moved so i'll do it aye yes yes okay you be done. Well, so they, they, they be done. We they be done. done. Right. Mm -hmm. <coughs>